performance, there was a huge backlash even from Trump himself. You, you seem to have turned a corner on Trump because he's so unconventional. Maybe it was harder to, to focus group than traditional candidates, but you did a special Trump-only focus group. What did it tell you? And it told me that the Trump voters are passionate, that they're committed. They have very specific reasons why they support him. They like the fact that he takes on the other candidates because they're tired of political correctness. They like the fact that he has altered his position on some of these issues because they believe that he's an example of someone who learns, unlike Barack Obama, who hasn't changed the belief in the last 25 years. And most importantly, they like the fact that he's taking on the establishment because, they're frankly, they're fed up. They're fed up with Washington. They're fed up with Congress. They're fed up with everything that has sold them out. And you hear it, and you're going to hear it tonight in, in, in the focus group. Uh, and they want to be heard. You know, I want to be heard. what I think is most interesting, though, Frank, is that this is the year of the insurgency. If you take Trump's numbers and you take Cruz's numbers, well, the, that basically is more than every other candidate in the race combined. I mean, in fact, in fact, Ted Cruz is by far the number one second choice for those who are supporting Trump. And Trump is the second choice for those who are supporting Cruz. But look at how much the, the establishment, the elite in Washington, hate, hate Trump, hate Cruz. And to me, you know, even Nikki Haley was disappointing the other night with her comments, kind of lashing out at the front runner for the Republican presidential nomination, because that tells me just how deep establishment roots go, because she was viewed as a, as a Tea Party type of candidate back in 2010. Well, let me take it even further. I've never said this until until this minute, which is I think that the Republican majorities are now at stake in the House and Senate. And I believe that because of the anger, not from the Democrats towards the GOP, that you expect, but from Republicans who might possibly stay home if the candidate that, that the GOP nominates isn't sufficiently different from the traditional, typical politician. Or what about and this? What will establishment supporters, will they stay home and pick up their toys like spoiled little brats and not vote because they didn't get their guy and, and help Hillary or help Bernie Sanders or help Joe Biden or whoever the Democratic nominee is? It's what we learned. I, it, and the answer, and you're going to be surprised, but the answer is actually yes. We heard that in Iowa. The seven out of our 27 participants said that if Donald Trump is a nominee, they would not vote for him in the general election. Well, how many Democrats, though, would cross party lines? According to a recent poll, that would be 20 percent. So that's a net gain of 13 for him. Yeah, I think it's significant. I believe that Trump would get a higher percentage of the African-American vote uh, than any Republican in modern times. Why, do you, think well, why is that? Because they, too, are angry with Washington and Wall Street. They, too, feel like they've been betrayed. And Trump's in-your-face nature appeals to them as someone who says what he means and means what they say. There's another group, Sean, which are the working class. It's not only among Republicans. It's independents and even a few Democrats who are fed up with the way the economic system works. They're not big business uh, Republicans or Democrats. They're the little guy. And they feel that only Donald Trump understands them. You know, well, his son was on my program, Don Jr., last week, and, and he referred to his dad as a blue-collar billionaire. And I think, you know, because he speaks in plain terms, he speaks with that New York sensibility, a little bit of an edge. I think it might have shocked people in the beginning, but I think they're growing accustomed to it, which is a little more combative, a little more streetwise, a little bit more uh, not, as, not as polished, sophisticated, per planned out even, if you will, more spontaneous, more real, more extemporaneous. Does that make sense? It does. Now you understand why Ted Cruz uses the phrase New York values to describe Donald Trump. Yeah. And there is a difference between the two of them. And I'd be watching Cruz tonight because I've seen his rise. And it started when he took on the media several debates ago. And he said, you guys, you're not asking the right questions. You're trying to make us look bad. Enough with that. In that moment, a whole lot of eyes turned to Cruz. And he's been gaining ever since that day. No. I think he's absolutely a viable opponent to Trump. Now, why do I think that any debate advantage goes to Cruz? In other words, they've been going at each other the last couple of days, and Donald is questioning whether or not it's going to be a long, drawn-out court process so, as to whether or not he's eligible to run, And which, by the way, I think I don't think is an issue. That's I've gone over the law.